The folks that you see up in front are those that moderated the four breakout sessions. And in theory, I was supposed to summarize all of their input, but as in the game of telephone, you know that if you try to summarize things more and more, the end message isn't so good. So I think it's far more appropriate that we'll just go directly to the source, and I will introduce each of these folks in just a minute. And I've asked them to summarize the critical needs that were identified in the breakout groups and to do that in approximately two minutes. Uh, and if they're successful at that, that will then give us a few minutes for Q&A uh, before the commissioner uh, closes our session. So we're just going to progress in sequence, and we will begin with Anil. And okay, if, well, if you please tell us the group that you had right. and then the key points. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for this. Uh, we were uh, discussing the fiber uh, and processing of the hemp. Right, so first of all, we discussed a lot of different uh, products that can be made, like for example, from the herd, from the fibers, the bedding, the uh, other fibers, uh, mulching and uh, vermiculture and so on and so forth. And some of our, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, discussion points where we, we have, I mean, we in the same in the world, uh, hemp fibers are produced in large quantity in Europe. They are also produced in China, processed, and so on and so forth. So as we start, we would like to do a survey of what has already happened in the Europe and also in China. And then uh, what can we do uh, here uh, as we start uh, working on that? <clears throat> we need to establish a supply chain uh, from fiber to finished product. Uh, and then uh, we need, for that, we need to uh, form a network uh, within the supply chain. The, the producers, the processors, the product, uh, you know, company that make the products and so on and so forth. So to form a network, and that's, you know, I'm looking at you for that. <laughs> uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, also market development. Uh, there are decorticating machines to separate out the fibers and the herd. Uh, we don't have any uh, that has been manufactured uh, in the U.S., so we need to do some development. We have ag engineering on campus, so we need to be talking to some of the engineers uh, and see what can be done, how can you know, they make uh, a machine that is useful for the New York uh, uh, farmers. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to promote the fibers and the products that come out of the fibers, could we ask New York State to require some of the products that are manufactured using New York State grown or other uh, state grown M? Is that a possibility? Uh, right? Uh, <clears throat> what else? I think, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Some of our uh, members were in uh, construction, uh, and hempcrete is the, uh, what should I say, latest uh, material that takes the herd and lime together into forming bricks or walls or whatever it is for construction. And uh, <clears throat> could we have codes uh, for that so that they can be, you know, standardized uh, products? Uh, and then some concerns were, uh, can we get grants uh, for research or for product development and also for uh, crop insurance? So these were some of the uh, points discussed in our uh, you know, group. Thank you very much, Neil. Larry, smart? Yep, thank you. So our group was focused on uh, food, grain, oil, and I'll add feed products uh, to that. So you know there's already a very well-established hemp heart industry in the prairies of Canada. I think it will be hard to compete with them uh, for that particular product. But there is a lot of opportunity to develop high-protein, plant-based high-protein products from hemp. Uh, and uh, speaking with the Canadians, that would, that's their target as well. Uh, so I would say in our discussions, uh, the food product innovation uh, probably will skew on in two directions. One will be a more uh, 
let's say, intact, uh, fresh product extract of oil and then maybe a high oil press cake from that, which is also high protein, very nutritious, uh, but minimally processed. And at the other end, I think there's a lot of opportunity to use, for example, supercritical CO2 extraction. That's one research opportunity uh, to extract and, and fractionate some of the components of hemp, uh, the oils, and then uh, purified protein. So I think there's a lot of opportunity on research uh, to purify that protein, uh, and then on the minimally processed side to develop innovative food products, uh, snack bars, uh, healthy vegetable, uh, healthy salad oils, uh, and maybe we can help with that in our breeding program to try to identify some cultivars that have a uh, certain balance of fatty acids. Some of the barriers, uh, as with any of these market opportunities, the barrier of uh, not being able to bring seeds uh, risk-free uh, across state lines, but there is an obvious uh, point where that comes into play with the uh, NOFA New York, with the Organic Farmers Association. They have come up with a form to certify your farm as organic uh, that includes an affirmation that you have not brought seeds across state lines. Uh, so that is a potential barrier for our organic farmers. And there is a premium for organic grain for food products. Uh, and then again, the, we need to try to focus uh, and develop our seed cleaning, storage, dehulling uh, capabilities in New York State uh, in proximity to our food product manufacturers. Uh, that's lacking right now, perhaps most obviously in the dehulling uh, step. We have a lot of seed cleaners and, and grain storage facilities, but we probably need to add that dehulling step. And then finally, I'll say, uh, Related to the New York grown and certified, uh, Cornell, I think, can add some capabilities in nutritional analysis, especially of competing products, and try to demonstrate the relative nutritional quality of the products that we would grow and produce here in New York State relative to protein products, for example, that might be imported from China. Awesome. Gary? Thank you. We had a uh, very lively discussion about uh, pests and pest management, and that uh, runs the gamut from uh, insects, diseases, weeds, and even the human variety. We spent a few minutes talking about how to keep those out of our fields. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to uh, just uh, hit a couple of highlights from this. Uh, a lot of good things are going on that we would like to see continued and expanded. One of this is, is the field survey. So, I mean, you, you've got experiments uh, all over the place, but right now a lot of what we can draw from it is anecdote. So um, we, we propose that uh, maybe we could work a little more on a simplified template to, uh, to try to get information from the various farms uh, that are trying this in the field. Uh, for instance, previous crop and all those kind of things, variety, a lot of the details that if we looked at in aggregate, we could start to at least draw some hypotheses about what's going on out there. Um, we talked a little bit about the need, of course, everything is organic at the moment because pesticides are not allowed. And to remind people, that also applies to organically approved pesticides. There's still pesticides for this use. But a particularly critical area is to be ready not too long down the line to, to have some seed treatments that are going to be available. And, not, and uh, this would include uh, biostimulants that may be one kind of gray area, not strictly a pesticides, but growth enhancing uh, materials that might be applied through seed. Um, we talked a lot about the uh, context uh, uh, of this crop as part of crop rotations, whether, whether those be corn, soybean rotations, dairy crop rotations, or vegetable uh, rotations. Um, we really need to dig out the biology and the implications for pest management in the sequence of crops that we're growing both before and after the hemp crop. And uh, equally important with that, uh, if we talk about how a, a, a grower is going to utilize their land in a certain crop sequence, what's the economics behind that? If they need to, uh, you know, break up, uh, you know, because of sclerotinia white mold problems, if they need to follow this with a crop of corn or wheat, what are the implications versus other things that they're going to be growing in that field? 
We talked a little bit about uh, how valuable this exercise is in the networking that's going on here and how we could keep that going on. And one of the, one of the I thought, good recommendations was maybe the uh, Hemp Industries Association might uh, be able to host a listserv or some kind of social uh, media platform that we could keep conversations going on in real time through the gro growing season beyond. And uh, the situation we're going to be in for at least some time is we're not going to have pesticides. We're going to really need to emphasize the, uh, particularly the cultural control practices. And I think one at the top of that list is to really look at what we can do with cover crops, particularly grass and cereal cover crops, that we might, uh, first of all, look at that as a mechanism for uh, weed management suppression, but also in the cases of, of some of the, the diseases that we might be able to suppress uh, some of those things. So those are our kind of top five. Excellent. Thank you. Alex? Hi, everybody. So we uh, had a pretty large and I would say lively uh, group for CBD discussing cannabidiol and, you know, how do we kind of enable CBD um, hemp producers to, to, to have more success in the industry in the state. So the first thing that came up was obviously funding for research and how do we enable that. Um, given the federal uh, legal, the status of federal legality of hemp, um, you know, getting f funding from private institutions and, and other traditional funding sources can be uh, a bit trying, um, if not impossible. So we discussed the concept, for instance, of you know, industry pioneers perhaps putting up some initial funds and working with the state to get them to match uh, those funds for businesses here in New York. Um, the second point of which we spent a lot of time was really clarity on regula regulatory standards and testing protocols. So obviously for many uh, growers in here, not understanding what's expected of you in terms of how often you're supposed to be submitting a test to the state, what, you know, how you need to set up your farm so that you are able to test properly, what those specific testing protocols will be, what happens if you, know, you get a test that comes back and it's hot, how do you avoid having to destroy the entire plot? So while those aren't really things that we can affect as, in terms of our group, we did have a discussion around it. And ultimately, um, I think the finding there was the state's going to do, you know, Department of Ag will do as much as they can to have clarity on the standards. But at the same time, they're trying not to, uh, and hopefully I'm, I'm, I'm representing this right, they don't want to over-regulate um, uh, 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 at, a, at, a, at a time when we don't clearly know what the best direction and weight for it is. Um, in absence of that, we've, you know, I think we all agreed that being the most um, uh, uh, careful and, and, and uh, you know, applying the highest standard that you're aware of is probably the, the, the best route to go, and obviously constant communication with the department. Um, we also spoke about standards on messaging for CBD nutritional products um, as opposed to uh, 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 you know, medical products. Um, and we, we, I think we agreed on that there needs to be, we should lead with some standard, standardization around how we message and that we should really be researching the very messaging on those products um, and figuring out a way to share that amongst each other in the industry so that it can collectively grow together. Um, just a few more things. Another big point and one that I personally think is like maybe the most important is enable collaboration within the industry. So this is one by sharing lists of resources. So what greenhouses are growing, what farmers are growing, processors available, et cetera. Now, granted, some of that information, we're not, you know, the state can't disclose for, you know, various privacy reasons, but to the extent that they can, um, we thought that that would be really helpful so everybody knows where they can go for different resources. Um, and secondly, uh, hitting on a, on a point that he just made, building some kind of, like, social platform online that we can all interact on um, and, and, and connect with each other. Um, and then the last two were all around education. The first, better educate the public for consumers. Um, this, again, went... Uh, immediately kind of into using a, a trade organization like HIA and having them work hand in hand with Department of Ag as they're developing a website on education and maybe they get the Department of Agriculture to link to it. Um, and then better educating police officers and, and local community officials. Um, and I think that uh, uh, where we landed on that was I know the Department of Ag I believe is working on a video that attorneys, uh, I'm sorry, that, law, that you can give to law enforcement um, locally so that you know, they understand that what you're farming is CBD, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we probably should figure out some other uh, uh, measures in that regard. I think that was it. All right. Thank you very much, Alex. Um, so before we entertain some questions, I just want to say one thing that I neglected to say when we started uh, this feedback session, and that is that I am here uh, filling in for Chris Smart, 
Uh, and you heard uh, Larry indicate that Chris is actually the project leader for what we're doing here at Cornell, but Chris is in Texas A&M at this point, uh, conduct, helping to conduct a review, and so she would like to be here, but she had that prior commitment. So I just want to acknowledge that uh, Chris's role in this. So um, are there questions to, to, to this panel, to some of the ideas? Yes, Larry. Yeah, because, because uh, Alex mentioned uh, Hemp Industries Association, uh, and those trade groups are quite active in other states. For example, in Kentucky, they have a quite active uh, trade conference there. So uh, I'm just wondering, here in New York, is anyone a member of Hemp Industry Association? A few. Susie Cody is the, but Susie is the president of our New York branch of HIA. Uh, I, I think there are opportunities for that group to be more active in New York. Questions? Questions for the panel? Yes. Uh, this is for Larry. Oh, I'm going to ask you to use this mic so everybody can hear the question. Hi, thank you. I'm Michael Casper. I'm a farmer here in Ithaca. And my question is to uh, Larry Smart. Uh, Larry, earlier in this program, you uh, had a list of uh, everybody in the hemp research uh, program here at Cornell. And how would I approach somebody uh, in that group? Yeah, so, so I've been acting as the point person, uh, so I'm happy to continue in that role. Uh, send me an email, give me a call, and if it's a question that I can't answer directly, if it's a disease question, then I'll direct it to Gary. If it's an insect pest question, I'll direct it to Elson. If it's something about developing a new food product, you know, so on and so on. But, but feel free to use me as a point person. And my, my contact information is on our website. We have simplified our URL now. Uh, so it's hemp.cals.cornell.edu. Yep, and what we will also do is put up a list of our regional and county extension specialists. Uh, because often they are the, the boots on the ground and your first contact at the farm level, and we'll make sure we have that list and, and sort of their, their regional coverage areas. Yes. This isn't really a question, but we were talking about um, a, um, a, a social platform that we all could use. We just made a group called Hemp Discussion Group. And if you want to join it, so you all, it's on Facebook. I don't know who uses Facebook. Uh, but if you do have Facebook and you want to join it, it could, we could all join it so we can be in discussion with all together. That way we don't have to worry about what information can be released and what can't be released. And we can discuss amongst ourselves and just skip that step because that sounds complicated. I'll use the term kind of loosely, wrap it up, because although the plane is circling the field here, I feel like we're just taking off in so many ways. Uh, let's give a round of applause to our group leaders here and panelists. <laughs> and thank you very much, Jan. You know, this has been a pretty insightful session, I think. I've been taking notes furiously, and I know our folks have uh, been taking notes in all the sessions. And I, for one, would just like to harness a little bit of the energy that's in this room because I think we could plow a lot of fields together. But these are the kind of questions that we needed to be asking ourselves. These are the type of practices that we need to share with each other. And I think you probably learned as much from the person you were sitting next to as you did from uh, all our speakers here today. Uh, I think we heard also quite a bit about different ways that we can leverage uh, the industrial hemp industry to boost agriculture in New York State, which of course is, is the overall goal in our mission, and potentially new businesses and processing as well. 
before we can move this industry forward, uh, we really needed to learn and hear about the research that we got done last year and look at our experiences so far. And that's why it was so critical to have all of you, the experts, our research partners, academia, all in one place, all in the same room and have eye contact with each other. Look at the barriers, look at the opportunities to grow, and then put together the strategies it's gonna to take to get us home. The governor has given us a great head start and I think with the strength of our research partners and with your passion and that energy, I think we're uh, in a good place to keep the momentum going here in New York State. I think today we've identified some pretty key areas for research. I know I took some great notes and I think you've already built the connections that you're gonna need uh, to stay in touch. And you know, we wanna make sure that we build those connections but we don't duplicate efforts. So, here we go. I've always said that things just seem to work better when we work together. I think this is a good example of that. The governor, as you know, likes to hold summits. I like summits, I like forums too, and I think this has been a pretty great one. Uh, I wanna thank you for being here today. I think the enthusiasm, the information has been exceedingly valuable. And I have to say, once again, I gotta thank Cornell especially uh, for doing such great research, the SMART team and Jan and all your folks, all the researchers that are involved. I wanna thank especially Chris Nyberg for being our MC, Jan for bringing us home here, uh, and especially all the panelists that, uh, once again, let's give them a round of applause before we leave here. I'm gonna ask that you keep us posted on your progress. Uh, we'll stay in touch with you, stay in touch with us, please, as we navigate the industry and take it forward. And again, thank you so much for attending this forum today and adding so much in that way. So thank you all for attending. Have a safe trip home and a good evening.